96, 96%, 96%, 97% state of charge. It is uh, 96, 96, 97. Guys, welcome back to yet another video here from the off grid garage in sunny. It is almost springtime. Look at this beautiful weather. The wind is nice and warm and we've got full sun on the tilt system on the garage here. Well, not full, but sufficient solar energy is coming in to actually fully charge our battery in winter time. Yes, isn't that crazy? Last month of winter and we are fully charging our battery shelf. The season starts early this year. And of course, as a tradition, we want to have a look at these single BMSs here and see what's going on when we fully charge our battery for the very first time after the winter break. Still in winter, but it's after the winter break. And we also have the very interesting situation this time that we have the micro inverter at the pool system charging our system, our battery here as well with up to two kilowatts. Yeah, there you can see the MultiPlus is charging as well. And of course we have to have a look at the micro inverter as well if it actually shuts down when the battery is full. Because as you know, this is all off grid here. We are not grid connected at all, but we have an AC coupled system connected to our off grid system. So once the battery gets full, the MultiPlus will increase the output frequency from 50 Hertz to 53 Hertz and the micro inverter should turn off. Well, if it doesn't turn off, we've got a slight problem. And here in the off grid garage, we are at 95.6% state of charge, charging 800 watts here from the garage, DC system, and also still pushing 380 watts from the tilt system into our battery. So all in total, close to one kilowatt charging power. Ah, now the pump has turned off. It's actually 1.4 kilowatt into the battery. And I also want to show you the um, configuration in the MultiPlus. So two things you need to set up to make this all work. Once you have to enable the charger in the MultiPlus, of course, because now there's power coming in from the AC side and it converts it into DC and push it into the battery. And this is what we can see down here in the VRM. 830 watts are coming in from the tilt system and it's charging our battery. So I have set pretty much the same settings in our MultiPlus as I have in my solar charge controllers. We are charging to an absorption voltage of 55.2 volts. I stay there for one hour and then I go back to float 53.6. And this one hour is purely for the balancers to do their work. And the second thing you need to set up is a assistant called PV Inverter Assistant. So if you start the assistant, you get the information here, what it actually does, and then click on next, next, next. We're not using a BMS in this setup. The frequencies are 50.2. This is when the micro inverter will start reducing power output and it will completely shut down at 52.7 Hertz. I haven't changed any of the settings. This was all preset and actually fits the D micro inverter. Then I tell the system, my inverter is 2.2 kilowatts and I have 2040 watts connected on solar and that's pretty much it. Then you upload this file to the MultiPlus and all the settings are set. So this uh, frequency shifting only works in off-grid installations and if you don't have a generator running or any other AC input into your MultiPlus because then the frequency is fixed to 50 Hertz, whatever comes from the generator or your grid or another battery, you are fixed to these 50 Hertz and the MultiPlus cannot increase the frequency anymore. So, but here in an off-grid situation, the MultiPlus is very flexible with the output frequency. This is pretty much our power source and it can determine itself if it needs to increase the frequency or not. So when does it actually do this? I was under the impression the MultiPlus increases the frequency already once we hit the 90% state of charge. Um, obviously we are at 96% now and still running our 50 Hertz. So nothing has happened so far. I have found online that the MultiPlus waits until it hits the uh, absorption voltage of 55.2 volts or if the battery is full or if we hit the charge voltage in the DVCC. I'm not aware that I have set a charge voltage in the DVCC actually. We haven't set any charge voltage at all, limit managed battery voltage, no. It's not turned on, so this is not a criteria for my setup. The only thing I have turned on here is the maximum charge current limit. 
For safety reasons, I have put a Sonoff electronic switch in between the micro inverter and our MultiPlus here. So in case the micro inverter doesn't turn off, I can just disconnect the Sonoff switch and the micro inverter will completely physically disconnect from our micro grid. But let's see when we hit the 55.2 volts, if the frequency actually increases and the micro inverter shuts down or at least reduces the power output. Um, I'll connect another charger here to speed things up because it's already it's already half past two and I'm not sure if we get enough sun to fully charge the battery here. So um, let's push some more energy into it. And as always I have prepared my three devices here to measure the BMSs of our battery shelf. In the top shelf we have our Heltec BMS. The middle battery has the JK BMS with the active balancer and the bottom shelf is now our it is the um, it is the overkill it is the 100 amp overkill BMS. The Heltec on the left is our top battery, 14 millivolt deviation, still charging with 12 amps, and it claims we are at 97% state of charge. So, JK BMS sits on 97% state of charge, deviation is 13 millivolt, and we are already balancing. Is that correct? I just saw a balance current popping up here. Let's check the settings. When do we start balancing here? At 3.4 volts. Who has set this one? Okay, uh, 3.45. No balancing anymore. And the overkill BMS here sits on 97% state of charge as well with 7 millivolt deviation. Nice. All right, so far nothing to see here, but we are still a bit low in voltage. We are at 54.26 volts and charging with 42 amps. Nice, how good is that? So the last time we fully charged our battery this year was on the 3rd of April. And this is exactly, this is exactly four months and seven days ago. You can see here battery min max 64 to 100 and I didn't reach the 100 at any point of time afterwards. 97% and here 96% and from there on it only went downwards. There was nothing in May. Maximum here was around 50% state of charge. June it was 56% state of charge maximum, July 59% and now we have beautiful and sunny August already. Okay we are at 98.6% state of charge and let's have another look at the BMSs here because we are now getting out of the flat part of the charge curve. So the um, Heltec BMS at the top here, the top battery, 13 millivolt deviation, still very good. The JK BMS 22 millivolt deviation, nothing is balancing at the moment. And the Overkill BMS in the bottom battery, 27 millivolt deviation. They were charging with 5 amps only into the Overkill battery, while 15 amps into the JK in the middle. And only four, 5 to 6 amps into the Heltec BMS at the top. Stupid enough there are clouds in front of the sun again. Of course, because I'm doing battery testing, right? I need a bit of solar consistency here, but there's nothing like this. And it's windy again, I'm making a video. So people can say, hey Andy, you should buy a... We are close to 55 volts, still no balancing happening. It's a very balanced pack shelf, I should say. Well, the overkill battery in the bottom shelf has a 47 millivolt deviation now, so this is, but still no battery cell over 3.45, so balancing has not commenced yet. And the JK battery in the middle shelf is on 32 millivolt deviation, while the Heltec BMS shows only 18 millivolts so far. So the top battery is our best one. And we are now at 55 volts battery voltage, overall pack voltage. We are still charging with 1004 watts from the tilt system into our battery. We had 99% state of charge. Another 1.3 kilowatt is coming from our DC system here on the garage roof. So still pushing 
close to 40 amps into our battery. That is insane. And frequency is still at 50 hertz. I cannot see any throttling or something. Nothing so far. So we just passed the 55 volt mark. And balancing has now started in the overkill battery in the bottom shelf. Just with one or two cells now, 3.45 volts. And we're also balancing in the JK BMS battery in the middle shelf. 31 millivolt deviation we have as well as in the Heltec BMS at the top shelf. One, two, three, four, six cells are balancing here. 36 millivolt, 40 and 61 millivolt. So the Heltec BMS is still the best so far in this race. And we are coming close to 55.2 volts now. We can see the frequency is now increasing to 50.3 hertz. Look at this, it seems to work. 50.5 hertz. And can we see the power going down coming from the tilt system? 50.6 hertz. Interesting. Never seen this before. It works. But is it throttling down? It is going down. It is throttling down. Look at this. Under 800 watts now. And we've got pure sunshine outside. Almost 51 hertz. 55.2 volts. Guys, it works. Can't believe it. It's increasing the frequency and the tilt system is throttling down slowly but steadily. 600 watts still coming in. We are still needing the power to absorb, you know. We are in absorption stage. 51.1 hertz. Oh, that is so cool. Let's have a look at our balancers here. Top shelf, 43 millivolt. JK BMS, 50 millivolt. And the overkill at the bottom shelf, 70 millivolt. That means we are balancing for an hour now and then call it and go down to 53.6 volts. None of the cells are actually running away. But um, have a look at the first 10 cells here of the Heltec BMS on the top shelf. Again, these are the cells with a higher voltage. And you may remember that we have actually swapped the Heltec BMS with the Overkill BMS. We have seen similar behavior in the bottom shelf battery and I wasn't quite sure if there's an issue with the batteries or if it is with the um, BMS. But it sticks with the Heltec BMS. So there is something we need to investigate a bit further. And what is our system doing here? We are at 51.7 Hertz. Wow. It's still allowing to charge with 325 watts now. We had 99.2% state of charge as per the smart shunt and still charging with 21 amps. See, and how the current is now tapering off, we would be able to charge maybe like with um, close to 40 amps into the battery now, but because we're keeping the voltage constant here, current is tapering off, frequency is increasing, 51.8 I've seen, there it is again. So do we need a BMS which actually limits the current when the battery is full? I don't think so. And if I would turn on the hot water or the pool pump now or start vehicle charging, the solar would ramp up again to full power while maintaining the battery on these 55.2 volts. And this is just not possible with the Seplos BMSs because the BMSs always tell the solar chargers, hey, I'm almost full, slow down to 10 amps. And then it limits your solar production to 10 amps only, which is stupid. The current is tapering off anyway. Look at this. We're almost at 52 hertz. And there's not much power coming from the tilt system anymore. That works perfectly fine. I'm impressed. And here we are at 52.1 hertz. Throttles down our tilt system, our micro inverter to 200 watt solar output only. That is so cool to watch. And I think the tilt system has now completely shut down. We can see we are actually discharging the MultiPlus now. So there's no power coming from the tilt system anymore. And now the voltage is declining a bit because we've got some load on the circuits here. And you can see the frequency is now decreasing as well, down to 50.9. And I can't remember what the trigger actually is for the microinverter to start producing again. I thought it is a linear relation between frequency and power output, but obviously not. It is waiting for something to happen. 
but you can see the frequency is now going down again because our battery voltage is decreasing and it tries to catch up with the 55.2 volts now. So the MultiPlus is doing correct and the microsystem is following. Perfect. Ah, okay, it goes back to 50 hertz and then the solar charger kicks in again. Look at this, full power, one kilowatt from the tilt system again, recharging the battery with 26 amps. Cool. So it waits until the frequency is normal to 50 hertz again and then it fully kicks in again. Wow. I'm keen to see the curve of the um, tilt system later on and see if we can see that actually in the power output. And now because we are over 55.2 volts already, the um, frequency is increasing again and the power output of the tilt system is decreasing again. So let's have a look at the BMSs here, the Heltec BMS in the top shelf, 66 millivolt, still balancing cell number 1 to 10. We've got 73 here in the JK BMS in the middle shelf and we've got 109 millivolt deviation in the overkill battery in the bottom shelf. And we have now reached the 52 hertz again. That means our tilt system has completely shut down already. And we are only charging the battery now from our DC MPPT solar charge controllers here. So it works perfectly. Amazing. That is fantastic. Great. Ah, and our smart chant has just reset. I was just going to see what settings I have. It has just reset to 100%. You can see time since last full charge, zero seconds. Oh, we are at 52.6 hertz. You can actually have a look here in the advanced tab. Look at this frequency, 50 hertz, 51, 50.1, 49.9. And then here at the end, we can see it actually going up there. Maybe we can see our two charge cycles we had this afternoon where the frequency actually goes up. That is pretty cool. So it does exactly what we have told it here in the assistant. Yeah, it goes up to 52.7 and at 53 there's no power output of the micro inverter. Okay, let's see if we can find anything in the app portal of the Solar Man. And here again it says over frequency and load reduction starting point is at 50.2 hertz. And the upper limit is at 52 hertz, so whenever we reach 52 hertz it turns off altogether. So here we can see the red curve is our grid frequency, 50 hertz, and then it increases. And we can also see the power output decreases at the same time. So these are the same curves here from the micro inverter perspective. We are still at 55.2 volts, frequency is 51.4 hertz, and the microinverter is turned off. I'll, I'll turn on a load now because this is one kilowatt of solar. I, I'll put it in the hot water system. We've got a load of 1.7 kilowatts on the system, frequency is coming down because the voltage is now decreasing in the batteries. And then at 50 hertz, we should see the increase of the tilt system of the microinverter again. There we go, 50 hertz, and now we should see the microinverter ramping up again. Yeah, we can already see a reduction in power output for the MultiPlus here. This is all now compensated again from the tilt system. So now the microinverter kicks in fully, and we are delivering only 800 watts additionally from our battery here to heat up our water. That is pretty cool, guys. There's no major problem with any of these batteries here on the battery shelf or any of these BMSs here. They all work fine, beautifully. Not fully optimal, but over time they will balance out. Okay guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your great support here on the channel for buying me a beer, all these wonderful and beautiful people. Also donating to the channel. Thank you as well for all your emails. Please do not send me any emails. I'm absolutely flooded with emails. There are far too many individual requests, unfortunately, and I haven't got the time to go through all these emails, guys. As always, if you have any questions, leave them down under the video so everyone can see them. A lot of people are helping out here and sharing their own knowledge and helping me replying to your requests and questions. So thank you very much to these proxy admins as well. This actually helps a lot. And until the next video, guys, when we do something completely different again, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye.